If you're watching this video, chances are you're considering scalp micropigmentation as a solution for hair loss. But with so many artists out there, it can be really tough to choose the right one. That's why we're here today to learn how to choose your SMP artist and avoid getting a poor result. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our amazing content. Welcome Anita, we are very excited to have you joining us today. Now we see the most amount of correction work um, come for consultation in our Brisbane location where you are. So I think it's really, really important that we cover this topic today. So tell us Anita, what are some specific qualifications or certifications that a good SMP artist should have and why do you feel that they're important? I find that first of all, that um, certification should be on show. So if you do go for a consultation, it is visible for you to to see and view. A personal appearance service license is something that um, is obtained from the council and it is a must have. Um, that's very important to look for, but also um, certification of where they have trained um, and if it's reputable, usually international, there's a, a few really good um, training centres in Australia, but having a applied science background, or nursing or dermal therapy um, is probably uh, favoured, but then to have done cosmetic tattooing or body tattooing, any experience with skin, because it is the largest organ of the body and it's not predictable. Um, so I find it really important that someone has experience just so that they can identify any disorders or any irregularities of the scalp, which can't be identified by somebody who hasn't got a skin background or it takes quite a while for you to learn the background of skin or how how it functions um, it's really important to the more qualifications the better basically so doing a, a week course is fine but I usually would suggest that that person has spent time being mentored by somebody or working alongside another artist um, so they can ask the questions um, and get the information and basically get the experience so um, checking that that artist is actually insured um, is yeah. also extremely important. Absolutely. Insurance is, is everything. If something does go wrong, and I have seen it go wrong in the past with other artists, um, it's, it's, it's horrible. But, um, yeah, look, insurance is, is quite important when it comes to something that's permanent, definitely. Yes. How can somebody research and evaluate different SMP artists to best find um, the right artists to fit their needs? I find that it's not too difficult if you know what you're looking for. When it comes to social media, um, a lot of people put up a lot of content. It's very new content um, and they put a lot of images up. But I always um, encourage my clients to scroll down as far as they can to the first image. And usually it's only six months to a year that they've actually been in the industry, um, even though they say it's been longer, unfortunately. Um, the other place I encourage people to go to is reviews. Um, yes, they can be fabricated sometimes and whatnot, but I think when they're genuine reviews, you can tell upon reading them. Um, and I also encourage my clients to when they see a really good review, ask that artist if you can meet them or chat with them. And the same goes with any images you see on social media. If you see something that you like, ask or approach that particular artist and ask if you can meet them and actually see it for themselves or meet that person and see it for themselves. And also finding the right artist that's going to create the right style. It's really important enough not just to choose, you know, the artist that happens to be the easiest to get to or the closest in location. Um, you should also be researching and finding the right artists that can create the style of hairline um, that you're hoping to achieve with your own SMP um, transformation. Absolutely. It's not a one size fits all, unfortunately. Um, and as much as we say that it is a tattoo that fades out and needs to be you know, retouched over years, it's still permanent if done incorrectly. So it is worth traveling if it means going to the right person to do the right job um, for you. What are some red flags to watch out for when choosing an SMP artist and how can somebody spot them before it's too late? 
It does come down to qualifications. Um, like I said previously, a lot of people do spruik themselves as being highly qualified or being in the industry a long time when they actually haven't. But we need to bear in mind that hairdressers do an apprenticeship for three years to cut hair that grows back. It is important to find somebody that is quite thorough with their consultation and goes in depth with the anatomy and physiology of it as well, not just this is the machine, this is the needle, this is how it's going to look. Um, you need a full um, consultation, which I find when I do consults, it is a good half an hour to an hour because there is a lot more to it than just a superficial a few dots on the scalp. So other red flags, if someone offers short sessions, um, if they can do it within an hour or one session and you're done, that's not how S&P works when you're layering and building and trying to make a realistic um, outcome on the scalp. But all the way this the scalp heals, to do one session, you need to sit and wait and see how that, that first session laid in heals so that when you go in for the second, you know how to predict it based on the initial healing. Anyone who offers a discounted rate, if they're using a high quality product, inks, machines, even insurances, that all adds up. Discounted means discounted. So you get what you pay for. And this is not a treatment that I think you should go for the cheapest alternative for it. And also clearing how long a treatment might go for is a really important question because you and I have been doing treatment since 2014, 2015, um, and we would be classed as experienced artists and you and I both take two and a half hours per session. So if you're finding an artist that can squeeze three to four people in a day, um, standard sessions, not scars or anything small, but proper uh, layering sessions, um, and they can say they can do that quite quickly or you, you are the third person on that day or fourth person on that day, I think that would definitely be a red flag. Absolutely. For the amount of impressions we layer in and the time that we take doing three sessions, it is quite taxing um, and a physical um, role to do. So that is a massive red flag. And the other one is um, when you're not shown a, a good, although we put a lot on social media, we do crop the images and blur and whatnot to disclose um, our clients um, identities when you go to a, a consultation you should be able to see all the raw before and afters and there should be a substantial amount not just two or three because that could be their practice run when they were doing their training um, you need to see a really good body of work and I don't believe that any artist is a good artist until they see their work come back two to three years later and there's some great artists coming out in the industry amazing artists but experience is experience and um that's something that you need to ask for field work and um look at the timeline when people do show you photos ask to look at the timeline because i do find that a lot of people do copy other artists images and then they crop it in and they show a closed in or close in um, part of that image and it's it's not their own work so it's not really authentic but um, I'm always open to um, if anyone sees a, a, an image that they like that I've put on social media I'm more than happy for them to I'll reach out to the person I've actually done that treatment on and have them do a meet and greet. Research is, is key isn't it you've only got one chance um, really to to get this right without having to go down the detrimental path of laser removal researching as much as you can and gather as much information and don't be scared to ask questions absolutely ask as many questions but a good consult a good consultation and a thorough consultation means that you leave there and all your questions have been answered by the artist already and some or you've got contact with them so if any questions ar arise when you leave you can then basically ask after the fact as well but I, I say proof is in the pudding I, I recommend that um, if, if someone wants to or sees an artist or meets an artist that they would like to go ahead with ask to see their their actual work um, meet people see what their work, work looks like on one-on-one -on -one. because I know myself when I put images up um, sometimes I'll put them up and go oh it looks so much better in real life but um, my job isn't a photographer 
Um, but I, I always encourage my clients if they would like to meet um, anyone that I've actually had. And I'm very lucky that I've got clients over the years, as we've said, we've done it since 2015. I've got so many clients that are more than happy to meet and show what it looks like in real life because I think there is a, a really false illusion of what S&P is on social media. Um, we can edit photos. We can make it look great. There's all the bells and whistles that surround it. But the bottom line is it is, as much as we say it's semi-permanent, when done incorrectly, it is permanent um, and laser can't go as deep as what we think um, if, if it's put into the wrong layers. See it in the flesh. And a lot of people don't get that opportunity, but I encourage that greatly. And Nina, I just want to say a huge thank you for taking the time to share your incredible expertise and insights on choosing the best SMP artist. We know you have a huge passion for SMP and it was an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Thank you, Caitlin. It's been a pleasure. Thanks very much. And that's a wrap on today's episode of the 5-Minute Fast Facts on Scalp Micropigmentation. I hope you have enjoyed learning from the incredible Anita on how to choose the best SMP artist for your needs. And if you're still on the fence about SMP, just remember our consultations are always free.